Lucy here and I hope everybody is doing super well. So today I am so, 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 so excited to film this video. I have been planning it for a while, so now I'm kind of glad I get to finally do it. But yeah, if you watched my vlog last week, I hinted at doing a like, um, collective clothes and books haul. So that is what we're going to be doing this week. So books wise, I've got them from a mixture of places, like charity shops, what's the ones, brand new, uh, off like other places, from other places and secondhand online as well. Um, and then clothes, it's kind of similar. Uh, some brand new off like the high street or just some secondhand ones. Um, I also have some useful tips because I was scammed by a Depop seller. So I won't go going on about that today. But yeah, I hope you enjoy this video and I'm gonna start off with books. So, mm -hmm. okay, so books wise, this is how many I have collected. Oh my God, some of those spines are turning the wrong way. But uh, yeah, I think it's 11. So I'm gonna give myself a minute to talk about each just so I'm not rambling on about them. Um, it's just gonna be a brief synopsis of where I got them from. Uh, I will leave links to like their good read pages so you can read like full synopsises and people's reviews and what they think about it if you're considering purchasing them. So that's what I'll do. But yeah, let's get into them. So I'm gonna start off with one I bought from the charity shop, a local one, and that is Maggie O'Farrell's The Distance Between Us. So I got this because I loved Hamnet and after you'd gone by uh, Maggie O'Farrell, when I saw this for 50p, because it, it is worn and the pages are a bit tatty, I just thought, do you know what? I'm gonna get it because I've really been enjoying uh, Maggie O'Farrell's writing recently. So, it kind of follows like a typical Maggie O'Farrell like novel, so I'm going to read the blurb to you guys. So it says, On a cold London afternoon, Stella encounters a man she has not seen for many years, whose face she instantly recognises, or thinks she does. At exactly the same moment in Hong Kong, Jake is realising that the crowd around him celebrating Chinese New Year is about to turn dangerous. They know nothing about each other's existence, but both flee their lives. Jake in search of a place so remote it doesn't appear on any map, and Stella for a destination in Scotland, the significance of which only her sister won't, Nina won't understand. So it does kind of like follow a uh, typical like Maggie O'Farrell book where it goes on about like connections and people. So of course I picked this up and it was 50p. So this is why you go into charity shops because you can get some bangers in there for like nothing. And I think that's always good. The next one I got from a charity shop is The Ice Cream Girls by Dorothy Coombson. I, this has been on my wish list for ages and I saw it hardback. I think it's one of like the first editions. Uh, and this was £1.50 in the charity shop where like even secondhand online you'd be paying like a fiver. So this is great. So Ice Cream Girls, I think this has been turned into, um, I believe it's been turned into a drama, like a BBC drama many years ago. Okay, so the synopsis is, as teenagers Poppy Carlisle and Serena Gorridge were the only witnesses to a tragic event amid a heated public debate, the two seemingly glamorous teenagers were dubbed the ice cream girl by the press and were dealt with by the courts. Years later, having led very different lives, Poppy is keen to set the record straight about what really happened, while Serena wants no one in her presence to find out about her past. But some secrets will not stay buried, and if theirs is revealed, everything will become a living hell over again. So this sounds like really gripping. It sounds kind of a bit like a crime, like mystery novel. Uh, like I watch TV programs like this. So yeah, that's another, sounds really interesting. As I said, I'll leave the link to like the Goodreads page and you just can like have a little gamble. If you see my tripod move up and down, it's very old. It's so, like, it kind of does that. It does move up and down. So I'm sorry, I need a new one. I can just get one off Amazon for like eight quid, but I can't be bothered. <laughs> this was the last book I got oh, in a charity shop. And I felt like when I won the lottery when I discovered this in the charity shop, because it was it is a relatively small charity shop that I went to because it's just literally like near me. Um, I didn't like go into the city centre or anything. I just, just went into a charity shop that is in like the student area around me. And I found Writers and Lovers for... £2.50. So I found this for £2.50 and it's been all over Bookstagram. So it naturally it has been on my, my watch list if you like for a while, but I just never like picked it up because I have seen loads of mixed things about it. 
Uh, I have already read this book and my review will be going up a bit shortly. I think I put, I put on my story the other day about how much I enjoyed it. So there's, there'll be no surprises there. So I was so happy to find this in the end. It follows Casey. Has, who has ended up back in Massachusetts after a devastating love affair. Her mother has just died and she is knocked sideways by grief and loneliness. Moving between the restaurant where she waitresses for the Harvard elite and the rent and the rented shed she calls home. Her one constant is the novel that she's been writing for six years, but at 31, she's in debt and directionless and feels too old to be that kind of way. It's strange not being the youngest kind of adult anymore. And then one evening she meets Silas, he's kind, handsome, interested, but only a few weeks later Oscar walks into a restaurant, his two boys in tour, he is older, grieving the loss of his wife and wrapped up in his own creativity, suddenly Casey finds herself at the point of a love triangle, torn between two very different relationships that promised two different futures. From actually having uh, read this book, I do highly recommend it. Um, so yeah, if you can pick up this up second hand or if you find it in a tarot shop, definitely pick it up. And I'm so happy I got this for £2.50 overall. I got these two on the same day. So overall I spent £3 on books and I was just like, I was walking out the shop feeling like I won the lottery. Okay, now we're gonna go second hand online and I got three books second hand online. We'll go with the first one, which is the Nakano Thrift Shop, which I read in my last vlog. So you might already understand the guise of it. Um, so I've read it and I really enjoyed it. Um, I'm really into Japanese fiction at the moment. And I like I say is that this is a really idyllic dream-like book and really sucks you in. So yeah, it follows basically the inside of Mr Nakano's uh, thrift shop it kind of transports you into like their world the people who work there and the characters and the the narrator is called Hitomi like she's a young girl who just started and then she gets into a relationship with uh, Takio and like it kind of like it's really it's like a nice book that kind of takes like a long timeline of events so if you're interested in getting into Japanese uh, literature or if you're already into it and you want to try more I highly recommend this book okay so the next one I got is Being Lolita by Alison Woods this is a memoir of Alison's life Lolita was if I grew up like on Tumblr I'd say like my teenagers I spent a lot of time on Tumblr thinking I was like indie lots of people my age like at that time so I was probably about 12 14 when I was using Tumblr and loads of girls my age were like saying that Lolita is like their favorite book and that's quite concerning <laughs> but yeah so this is a memoir and it says have you ever read Lolita and it follows her as a lonely vulnerable high school senior and she finds solace only in her writing and a young charismatic English teacher Mr North he praises her as a special gifted writer and she blossoms under his support and his vision for her future Mr. North gives Alison a copy of Lolita to read, telling her it's a beautiful story about love. The book soon becomes a backdrop to a relationship that blooms from a simple crush into a forbidden romance, with Mr. North convincing her that theirs is a love affair rivaled by Lolita's masterpiece. But at the time, as time progresses and his hold of her tightens, Alison is forced to evaluate how much of that narrative is actually a disturbing fiction. So this sounds probably, it sounds quite tragic and quite thought provoking. And I've seen many things on books about this one. I am excited to get into this. If you have read it, let me know how you felt about it down below. Okay, so the next one is Sweet Bean Pierce by Jurian Sagawa. So again, this is another uh, Japanese work of art. Yes, and I've seen, again, lots of things on Bookstagram about this. So I thought, do you know what? Let's give it a whirl. And yeah, so it's classed as a charming tale of friendship, love and loneliness in contemporary Japan. So Sentaro has failed, he has a criminal record, drinks too much and his dreams of becoming a writer is just a distant memory with only the blossoming of the cherry trees to mark the passing of time. He spends his days in a tiny confectionery shop selling doriaki, a type of pancake filled with sweet bean paste, but everything is about to change. Into his life comes to Tokyo, an elderly woman with disfigured hands and a troubled past. She makes the best sweet bean paste Sentaro has ever tasted. She begins to teach him her craft, but as their friendship flourishes, social pressure becomes impossible to escape and Toko's dark secret is revealed with devastating consequences. 
So this sounds like, again, something that is right up my street and I can't wait to get into this. I've seen loads of things on Bookscram. These three books that I just talked about, uh, so the kind of the shop being Lalita, uh, were all from World of Books and that is a great website you can get cheap um secondhand books and world of books are quite sustainable in like how they work and how they send things and their packaging as well it's all recyclable and again because it's second hand it's like good uh, makes you feel good about yourself does it okay so there were all the books that i got uh primarily second hand uh, the next ones were all brand new ones that i bought from waterstones so the first one is you have to make your own fun around here by Frances Macken. Frances Macken is an Irish author and I love Irish authors. I don't know, I think it's just something about them. I think more relatable than a rich Southern author for me. I don't know. So you have to make your own fun around here. She has been uh, touted as kind of like a mixture of Sally Rooney and Eleanor Ferrante. And I loved Ele both of those uh, authors. I read Eleanor Ferrante's uh, The Lion Life for Adults and I've read both of Sally's books and I enjoyed them. So it follows Kate, Maeve and Evelyn who have been friends forever. Outspoken, unpredict unpredictable and intoxicating, Evelyn is the undisputed leader of the trio. But Katie's dream of escaping their tiny rural town for a new life in Dublin confronts her with a choice. To hold on to her friendship that has made her who she is or risk leaving her best friends behind. So yeah, a nice story of friendship and kind of like a coming of age novel surrounded with female protagonists. So that sounds right with my street and I'm excited to get that. So what found that in Waterstones and yeah, I can't wait. Uh, I haven't really seen much about this on Bookstagram or like in the book community. So I'm hoping to trailblaze this one, guys. Unless one of you guys gets there first and reads it before me. Or if you have read it, let me know how you thought about it. So the next one is White Ivy by Susie Yang. The book follows Ivy Lin, who is a thief and a liar, but you never know it by looking at her. Ivy Lin, a Chinese immigrant growing up in a low-income apartment complex outside of Boston, is desperate to assimilate her American peers. Her parents disapprove, berating her for her mediocre grades and what they see her as lazy, entitled attitude. But Ivy has a secret weapon, her grandmother, Mei Feng, from whom she learns to shoplift to get the things she needs to fit in. Ivy develops a taste for winning and for wealth. As an adult, she reconnects with a blonde-haired golden boy from of a prominent political family and thinks it's feared. But just as Ivy is about to go from everything she's ever wanted, a ghost from her past resurfaces, threatening to almost her almost perfect life that she's worked so hard to build. So this book seems to be filled with like twists and dark things, and it kind of is a bit like you know the clashing of you know second generation immigrants trying to fit in and a mixture of gossip girl at the same time very interesting i can't wait to get into this one again this is not one that i've seen on bookscram i just picked it up when i was in the store and i was just browsing around nothing better than that is that you know when you go to a bookstore and like i go like so when i went into waterstones the other week i didn't have any books in mind that i wanted because when i go to a bookstore i like to browse and read things and i came out with things that weren't even on my way. Have one apart from one. One was on my wish list, but the rest weren't. So it's great. It's great. It's really, truly great. Small pleasures in life, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so I talked about this one in my last blog. So it's blog? Vlog. Uh, I talked about this one in my last vlog and it's Emma McBride's Strange Hotel. So she's another Irish author. And this sounds quite different. I've looked through the book and there's not a single chapter and I already have a reasoning like, you know, chapter breaks, and I already have a feeling I know why, and I can't wait to get in this. So, oh, super excited to get in this because it's so different from anything that I've read. But essentially, this is what it's about. A woman enters Avignon Hotel room. She's been here once before. But while the room hasn't changed, she's a different person now. Forever caught between check-in and check-out, she will go to occupy other hotel rooms from Prague to Oslo, Auckland to Austin, each as anonymous as the last. There, amid the open suitcases, the matchbooks, cigarettes, keys and room service, wine, she will negotiate with memory, with the men she sometimes meets, and with what might mean it might mean to return home. So this sounds like a mystery, a bit of horror, a bit of like, oh, like a bit of dystopian. It sounds really interesting, and I really can't wait to get into this. I guess we're into our last two books, and I'm going to go on to another hardback. And this is one I am currently reading now. So I'm kind of already understanding what it's kind of a bit about, um, as I am about 100 pages in. 
but I have no self-control when it comes to new books. I will read the new books and then like ones that I've kind of like thought, oh, you know what, I'm not feeling it to like, you know, read right now. I get them on my shelf. I've got a few of those actually to work through. So without further ado, it is Scenes of Graphic Nature by Caroline O'Donoghue, another Irish author. But she kind of, I read her book, Promising Young Women, and that was one of my top reads of this year so far. Uh, my full review of that is on my uh, bookstagram. I have a guide with all my book reviews because this was, Promising Young Women was one of the first ones I reviewed on my bookstagram page back in late January when I first, when I was starting out. So God, I've been doing veteran now so uh yeah scenes of graphic nature by caroline or donoghue i'm already really enjoying it uh, but i'll tell you guys what it's about so charlie regan's life isn't going forward so she's decided to go back after a tough few years floundering around the british film industry experimenting in amateur pornography and watching her father's health rapidly decline she and her best friend laura's journey to her ancestral home of clipton an island off the west coast of ireland knowing that this could be the last chance to connect with her dad's history before she loses him. Charlie clings onto the idea of her Irish roots offering some kind of solace, but she'll find out her heritage is about is more than cliches of clover formed Guinness. When the girls arrive in Clipton, Charlie begins to question both of her difficult relationship with Laura and her father's childhood stories. Before long, she's embroiled in a devastating conspiracy that's been 60 years in the making and it's up to her to reveal the truth. So this is quite, sounds like a quite, it, well, so far it's quite sharp and sour, um, hitting a few things on the head. One thing it does remind me of is it gives me hints of salt water by Jessica Andrews, which is another sensational book uh, set between Sunderland and Donegal in Ireland. Yeah, this is so far I'm enjoying it. As I said, I'm 100 pages in, so I'll probably finish this within the next couple of days. Um, so a review will be coming up with this soon, but I love Promising Young Women by uh, Caroline O'Donoghue and I'm sure that this is going to become one of like my favourite reads of this year because I'm already truly enjoying it. I was like, oh, I'll give myself a minute to talk about each book and I'm just looking at how long I talked about the last one for and that was three minutes. We're on the last one now, an absolute classic. So I thought we would finish on a classic. So I picked up The Bell Jar the other day in Waterstones by, uh, so this is by Sylvia Plath. And I've seen so much about this. Uh, sounded really interesting, really right on my own street. Um, but I just, you know, you just like, you know, there's a classic out there that you'll know you enjoy, but sometimes you just forget about it. And this was one of them. So. The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. And I think most people probably know what it's about, but I'll give you a synopsis. So, working as an intern for a New York fashion magazine in the summer of 1953, Esther Greenwood is on the brink of her future, yet she is also on the edge of darkness that makes her world increasingly unreal. Esther's vision of the world shimmers and shifts from day to day in the sultry city, her crazed men friends in the hot dinner dances. So, this sounds like something that will get me thinking probably might get me a bit angry about what was going on towards women in the 1950s but again it's good to like kind of get the history behind that and fuel your feminism if you like so i can't wait to get into this one it sounds really interesting and i've seen so many great things so many people have championed this as their favorite book so who knows i think george orwell's 1984 might be pick up the post with what any of these books to be honest i'm thinking about it now i think I need to really think about what my favourite book is because I don't think it is George Orwell's 1984, which is groundbreaking, groundbreaking, groundbreaking. That is all the books done. Um, I feel like I've talked for 50 years already, but now we're on to fashion. So as I said earlier, I've got a few pieces from Avenue, Depop. So I'm going to start off with new and I'm going to start off with the basics that I got. I think that's a good way to start. Basically, I needed some new basics, like brand new basics that will last me a long time because some of my basic tops I'd worn to death, so they weren't looking too fresh. So I thought I'd treat myself to some new things. And I got a pack of two vests from Pull and Bear. So they're just in like this mini green. One of them has, so this one is a floral pattern on and the other one is just a plain one. And I thought that's good for like mix and matching stuff. Um, so these were for two, I believe they were eight pound. Um, I'll leave a link down below. So if you're interested in them, um, I'll show you me trying them on. Uh, but yeah, 
these are really like, I've already worn them already. They're thick, they're good material, they're stretchy as well. So they'll last me a long time. Uh, so that's why I got some of these new basics. You've probably already seen me wear these uh, little vests in a couple of my videos, but these are from Bershka. And these are just like racer back, you know, high neck ones that you can wear with anything. And I got them in lilac and I got them in yellow because I've already got like pink ones, white ones, black ones. Uh, orangey ones so I thought I'll get these two colors because I've got a few like pieces like that would go well with them I've got purple jeans I've got like um, a few yellow things as well that I thought I could mix and match with so I decided to get these again these are really good quality they're thick and stretchy and they were f I think a fiver each on Bershka again I'll link them down below if you're interested in them but yeah you can see the kind of like go down into like the where it's kind of like a coarse material, so they're very, very flattering them on and just like a basic, they offer that. But again, because of the style of them, they will last a long time and they'll be something I'll be wearing in summers to come. So yeah, they were really, really a good find, a good purchase and I'm happy with them. I also had to get some new jeans because uh, my just, you know, everyday jeans are not fitting me at the moment. So I got the classic mum jeans and I sized up in them and these are a lovely fit. They're a bit baggy at the waist, but again, room for improvement, guys. Room for improvement. So, um, yeah, I'm really happy with these. I've never had got bought jeans from Zara before because this trousers from Zara truly scare me. I'm only five foot four. So, like, when I've tried on trousers before Zara and they've always been just way too long, way, way too long. So I've always been a bit skeptical about trying and buying jeans from Zara, but these are actually all right and they fit me nicely and obviously because they're a mom style you can turn them up or you can do whatever with them and they you know, look quite good and the good material as well thick jean material which is what you need and these will hopefully last me a while yeah as i said i've bought jeans from zara before but hopefully they will last me a while <laughs> okay so i think i'm going to continue with zara and um, you've probably seen this on my bookstagram but it's like this cute little bag look it even goes with my red top and it came, so it's like a nice little bag. It's quite big actually, and you can fit a lot in it and it ties there, keeps things secure and it's, it's really sweet. And it comes with a matching top that like ties at the back. So like it's got a tie detail at the back and then like obviously the pile in front, like that kind of like racer back high neck style. But it is again, really good material, really thick, like good material. And then at the back, it's nice, nice and breezy. It's good for summer months. Like this will be, yeah, really good for summer months. And it's nice and bright and colorful. This is something that I really wanted to buy when buying clothes this time around. Um, normally I'm not really into like bright, colorful things, but um, I've been trying to get into it because I'm sick of like, just kind of wearing like plain clothes all the time. And this pattern offers it and it goes it goes nicely with my blonde hair so we like that we'll continue with zara and i bought the sweetest dress ever like the sweetest dress ever and i love it like it's silky it's just so nice and when you try it on it's so flattering and it's in this pattern so yeah Again, it's like really good material and it's really flattering on. Uh, but yeah, I'll leave all the links down below to these because I know Zara website is quite hard to navigate and I think this is still in stock, I do believe. Um, but yeah, like this is just so nice on the material, so good. Like there's no like showing of the nip, which sometimes like when you're buying dresses is an issue. Like sometimes it can like show things, but again, this is really good. And I just got my usual size in this. I don't like size up or down. I just got my usual size and it fits me fine. So I'm on to my last things now, two things that I bought brand new. So this is a jacket, like a denim white jacket from uh, Bershka. And it was literally like 19 pound. Again, this is something that's gonna last me a while. It's like cropped, it's just white because I'm not, I don't think I would be able to suit double denim. I've got a de denim jacket that I've had for years, um, but I just personally don't think I would be able to pull off the double denim look. So I decided to get this because my jacket collection for like spring and summer is a bit shit. Like it, I don't really have jackets and then, but I feel the cold because of my health conditions. Like my heart condition makes me feel the cold. So like, it's not ideal. And then when I go to like, I go and visit my boyfriend in Northern Ireland where it's Baltic. Um, it's colder than the northeast of England. Can you believe that? It's just not ideal. 
so I just thought I'd buy this and then it kind of gives me like options with my jackets so I'm thinking oh my god I have to wear like white jeans because I've got nothing to wear with my blue jeans I don't know why I know double denim is a, a snatch look but I just don't feel like it so that is a good jacket okay so I got another pair of pink jeans because I'm going to show you what I did to my ASOS ones I don't know if the camera will be able to pick up basically I spilt tea on them and it's left a big stain like from where I've been like trying to like get the stain out as well it's like took away the colour these were the perfect fitting colour jeans for me they fit me really well because they were petite as I said I have an issue with leg length because my I have like a long tor torso and a short body I'm short I have a long torso and short legs um so trying to find jeans that actually fit me as i said but the zara ones has been a nightmare before these jeans didn't do that and now they have like gone they're gone i can't resurrect them i think i'm going to turn them into like long length um kind of like bermuda shorts because i think that'd be cool uh thrift these up and i'm going to change them into shorts i think so i went on stravidus and i found these and last in my vlog last week you would have saw me cutting these up and actually they fit really nice they go really nice with doc martens they go nice with any like shoe to be honest sandals and yeah it, they add a bit of pizzazz to an outfit and i love them so much in purple and it's again exactly the same i just cut them at the bottom so they'd fit me and it's the really good material i like a really baggy jean i'm not too I've never been one that really likes really tight clothing. Um, so a baggy jean for me, like this was really good, like really good. Um, good quality as well. I haven't washed them yet, so we'll see if they shrink. If they do shrink, it might be better actually. Link them down below. So yeah, you can like these are just like versatile jeans. I think for the summer, that's why I've got some like colorful jeans because the good thing about them is that you can either go full one chrome. So like I could wear this with that purple top. I've got a purple cardigan. Or you could like completely switch it up and put it with like pink because purple and pink go well, purple and green go well, um, purple and uh, yellow go well. So I could even wear it with that yellow top. And yeah, it, it's just going to be like bringing some pizzazz to it. Something different from normal jeans. Okay, so this is the last brand new thing that I bought and it is a midi skirt from Pull and Bear and this was £19.99 because this item actually has the price on it um but yeah it's a bit crinkled because it's just been lying on my bed but it's this gorgeous again pink and orange like mixing colours and I've got like an orange cardigan I've got a nice pink top and I just thought I love midi skirts like it's just like so effortlessly stylish and the good thing about this is that it has like a tie feature for the waist and that kind of like brings a little bit more pizzazz to it. You can dress it up, dress it down because it's a thing. Um, so yeah, you can wear it day and night. Nice chunky sandals, even heels. To be fair, uh, your Doc Martens, like I think that would look good. Chunky trainer. Like, so I'm very excited to actually get out and about in this. Uh, my boyfriend's coming end of May, so I'm hoping that I will get to wear this out. Hopefully if the weather's nice, like to a nice pub garden or even to a restaurant. Who knows? We just have to keep praying. Okay, now we're on uh, Depop or eBay. I'm gonna go Depop. So this girl, I just got it off like a random girl, like not like this is not a Depop seller, and she was selling this uh, nasty gal, brand new nasty gal satin sh skirt. Still got the tag on it actually, and she was selling it for like half the price of what it was even was on thingy. She just didn't like it for her because it didn't fit her, and it's in perfect condition. And yeah, it's this gorgeous, gorgeous. This is like my favorite color, um, like greens and like mini greens and stuff is like my favorite color. So it's such a gorgeous material and the slit down the sides really, really flattering. Um, it kind of helps so you could dress it down and you can really, really dress it up, uh, dress it down and I'd match it with uh, these greens, wear it with a nice white crop top, uh, a nice blouse, um, even like a big jumper, it would look lovely, heels, Chunky sandals, Doc Martens, chunky trainers, just some pair of Air Forces or even Converse. This would look really, really good. Um, yes, yeah, so I was happy with that. And I was really happy that, like, you know, I got it and I found it. Yeah, so that was the my positive Depop experience. Um, this other girl, I'm not going to leave her thingy down below because I had a bit of an issue. 
Well, you'll know the with jean, like uh, wrap tops, Emma Chamberlain, or one, I'll insert the picture of her wearing it. I put in Depop the name of that top, and this girl claimed that she was selling, because there was only one on the page normally of like people like selling stuff from like AliExpress. They um, have like numerous items, like different sizes, because obviously they get, buy them for like seven quid on AliExpress, and then they put loads up and then they make a massive profit. But this is what this girl was basically doing, but she only had the one on, so I wasn't 100% sure. She claimed that this was authentic uh, with Jean. Um, as you can see, it's kind of like a scuba material, which the with Jean is not, and the label gives it all away. That's not with Jean. But she claimed that it was, and she charged me quite a bit for it because it was a lot cheaper than what you would get if it was from with Jean but uh, obviously being said because I thought it's second hand because she even said like oh it's second hand but this is not even second hand it's brand new and it's from uh, AliExpress so I disputed it with her because she charged me quite a bit and the average that this type of top is going on for AliExpress with free delivery is nine pound so I disputed it with her and I disputed it with Depop and I managed to get my like some money back and keep that and because I'm not fussed like I would it's annoying that it's from AliExpress and that she like claimed that it wasn't and then yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is what Depop sellers do. They go into like charity shops, they buy something for two quid and then they put it on for like 40 pound and then they make a big profit. And I think sometimes it's a bit cheeky, especially if it's from actually from AliExpress and it's not the brand that you're trying to claim that it is. But anywho, got my money back and I'm still gonna keep it because it's nice on, as you can see, it's nice on. Um, I've got the body of Timothy Chalmers so this is not as like risky because i'm really really flat chested um but what i think with a bit of boob it would probably look insane and unreal but as i said i'm very flat chested so what can we do about that guys <laughs> nothing now we're on to the final thing and i think i've saved my favorite thing out of this whole haul like clothes haul um till last yeah i think i've saved my favorite thing from this whole clothes haul to last and it is this dress, I got this from ebay.com and so I was aware that this was something that would be shipped over and it is literally the most flattering dress. If you could like put that, ladies and gentlemen, her, <laughs> like when I walk in wearing it. That's how I feel, I feel like a bad bitch when I wear this. Um, I know the colors, so it's yellow and pink. I know that gives Mr. Blobby vibes. Um, but yeah, this is insane. You can get it off Verge, girl. If you're not wanting to look on eBay, you can get it off Verge Girl. But then you like, if you live in the UK, you're then paying like shipment costs. Yeah, you're then like paying shipment costs. Um, I didn't pay anything for like I got like three quid for the delivery of this. Um, but yeah, the material of it is incredible. Like that is a really really good stretchy material, and it's just it's going to be lovely for summer. This dress it down with a denim jacket, a nice bag some trainers some chunky trainers or sandals or you can dress it up with some nice pink heels you know what i mean oh again i can't wait my boyfriend comes over we're gonna go out i'm gonna wear all these lovely clothes and i'm gonna feel like a queen feel like a queen but yeah my bed is now a mess i have to clean everything up <laughs> hope you guys have enjoyed this video um please like it subscribe to my channel and comment down below as well um especially if you've read any of the books or if you've got any questions i'll leave all the links to everything that like clothes wise down below and then i'll leave the links to like the goodreads pages for all the books so you can have a look at the proper synopsises of them and other reviews of them if you would like yeah i really enjoyed filming this video i like chatty ones like ones where i can just sit down and talk um i'm sorry if this has been really long and boring for you um I'm sorry if you're not a fan of hauls, as I said, all of these things I have bought with my own money and I've collectively bought over time. I haven't just run up the shops last week and bought every single thing. Trust me, I cannot budget that and I have no justification for that. But yeah, uh, I'm so glad I I got the, these things. Um, books wise, I'm branching out a bit and fashion wise, I'm trying to like get out of my comfort zone. As I said, like I'm kind of feeling better about like myself this year. I I'm kind of wanting to like express myself through fashion again, which is something that I stopped doing. So I'm excited to try these pieces. Even if they are just like part of trends, like I still like, will probably would never have picked them up because they would be too bright for me. Um, but I'm really excited to get into like wearing these. I'm excited to get into the books. 
and thank you so much for how to do that so thank you so much if you've watched this video all the way through i'm now gonna do a nice little catwalk and i used to try and close in front of my grandma and my mom when i was growing up you know eves Who's that girl? La 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 la. He used to sing that. My grandma used to sing. If you listen to that lyric, the lyrics of that full, I think she only knew the chorus to be fair. But um, yeah, grandma was into it. But thank you guys again for so watching this and supporting me and giving me the confidence to do these type of videos. Um, lots of love, and I will see you guys next week. So bye. <laughs>